Get a new chair. Hit him with a. Hit him with a. Hit him to the ground and the crowd go wild, man. Now I know we are. It's not even this show today. <laughs> That's right. Hi, it's your friendly neighborhood Red Dog, and this is Red Dog and Friends. Every time. It's Every your boy, time. your nephew, your cousin. It is not my line because that is not who is here on this show. It is your friendly neighborhood red dog. That's right, the Air Force veteran intel specialist, the one you call on when you need to get the job done. And uh, this is Red Dog and Friends. And I know normally, like, Chaz would be here to, like, kick off and say fun things and stuff like that. But we're not about that business today. So this is the reason why you get me because he just so happens to be beating the shit out of the hype. And we've already gone one minute into the show with the first cur- first curse word flying. So, yeah, welcome to Red Dog and Friends. And uh, let's talk about it real quick. So uh, we're going to introduce my friend. So you see my man right here, okay? He is the Three Counts resident super villain. That guy that you know who was there when David went over Goliath dirty. Uh, so you give it up to the man, the myth, the legend himself, the Dark Lord. Damien, fatal. Just want to say that uh, Jesus Christ helped uh, David win. Uh, you know, he tripped up. He tripped up Goliath. I saw it. Nobody else did, but I saw it. He grabbed his foot on the rope under the rope. So I lost that bet. <laughs> he was gonna. He was not. He's like this six. This six pieces of silver. Mm-mm. It's gonna nah. stay with me for a while. <laughs> no, no, no. I won, you know, like you know, when when uh, God said, "Let there be light," and all that happened. So, you know, I won that bet, but he wasn't trying to let that one go. So, it is what it is, I guess. It is what it is. And returning to the show, you see him right there below me. You guys saw him when he was on Damien and Friends, and he has come to join us on Red Dog and Friends. He is a good friend of mine as well, and he's been up and down the East Coast, and currently resides in a place that you guys don't need to know. He is the man of myth, <laughs> also a legend himself, Twitch Graves. The only Graves that matters, and don't forget it. That's right. That's right. So let's get into these intros and announcements, as you guys already heard all our intros. So announcements-wise, uh, go buy our merch. Uh, yeah, that just makes sense, right? Because, like, that's what we do here. You buy our stuff uh, and help us support the show. Uh, speaking of supporting the show, you guys need to go check out the newest show that's on our sh- our network, which, you know, of course, is the Infinite Plus Network. That's right. Subscribe. Check out some stuff that's going on there. And you guys can also check out the show that's the newest addition, like I said, to the Three Count Podcast, The Villain's Lounge. And we will have you dropping a new episode tonight. I didn't do it last night because uh, Elimination Chamber fucked me up. So, <laughs> <laughs> did it. Fucked up my whole day. <laughs> did it. Uh, <laughs> also, if you guys want to and you guys need to, go check out the newest episode of Now Entering the Ring. This week, we got Andy Brown coming in. It's going to be a great episode, a lot of fun. Uh, it was just a great conversation with the guy who... You know, has a great knowledge for the business. So, you know, shouts to the Philly area, shouts to Andy Brown. It was cool to see uh, get him on the show. So, with that being said, let's let's address the elephant in the room, right? Uh, you guys should be seeing this on twi- on uh, on X, Twitter, whatever you want to call it. And we're back on Twitch. Uh, so, why are we back on Twitch? Well, you know, we want to make some upgrades, and we wanted you guys to come see us and talk to us and leave your comments and everything else that you guys wanted to do. So, we wanted to expand to y'all so you guys go ahead subscribe to our channels whether it's youtube or you're on facebook or you're checking us out on spotify or even if you're checking us out on twitch listen to us on amazon music or that stupid jingle iHeartRadio, radio whatever it is subscribe to our stuff follow us and you know go ahead and uh you know like i always like to say on the now intern ring uh share this with your father your mother your brothers your sisters your cousins your aunties your uncles who's probably been removed from your family tree two or three times and then even share this with your enemies because we love haters too do all that stuff uh and we're gonna get right into it so uh i don't we know about to- weird uncle jerry though Just yeah wanna- no don't yeah, weird that uncle guy. jerry is weird yeah he's definitely a weird guy but your uncle rich that dude can slay that, it that's, that, that, that's the guy right there. That's the guy. That's the guy. And also, I know uh, for some of you guys are all confused on the Infinite Plus Network trying to figure out what happened to your favorite trap rapper. Nothing. Nothing at all. He's still doing the same videos. Okay. And hey, or buddy. that movie that you were trying to watch, uh, man, it ended. That's That was the best part of that whole movie. Okay. Welcome to a better show. 
So uh, hey, anyway. it was a better show. So we're good. <laughs> So we're going to get into uh, some debate topics, right? But today, the first thing we're going to kick it off with is Temp Check, which is, if you guys don't know, Temp Check is where we talk about our hottest, our coldest, and including now our match of the week. Because, you know, we got some other stuff we want to throw at you guys. So we're going to go ahead and start it off. Uh, Twitch, why don't you give us our your hottest, your coldest wrestlers of the week, and as well as your match of the week. My match of the week is very, very simple. My match of the week is Dom and JD versus New Catch Republic on SmackDown. I love tag team wrestling, and this was just a showcase for me. Ironically, I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> oh, there you go. Uh, my hottest wrestler, Rhea Ripley. Obviously, she's been on fire with just almost everything she touches turning to gold. You even got Nia Jax to look semi decent. Uh, <laughs> my coldest wrestler. If you watch the Villains Lounge, you will know that anything this man touches is negative one million axe handles. Logan Paul. <laughs> Why? All right, I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna ask. Why Logan? Why Logan gets gets like the negative? I I. I can't really pinpoint an exact reason why I don't like him or why he gets the negative, but he just, he just does. It's something about his face that annoys me. I feel you. I feel you. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Damien, why don't you give us uh, your hot, your cold, and then your match of the week? Well, we already know who the coldest is. It, it, it's, uh, it's Christopher Jericho. Christopher is always the coldest wrestler. I mean, sometimes I have a B, but nah, nah, I can't wait to shit on him this Sunday. Hold on, is he wrestling this Sunday? And of course he's wrestling uh, this Sunday. I'm going to be honest, I don't recall seeing his name on the card. You know what? If he doesn't, that would probably be the brightest spot of the uh, of my life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my, my hottest... Uh, Hmm. Ooh. Mm. Drew. Give me Drew. Give, give, give me Mr. Give, some, give me Mr. McIntyre. Um what he did on Friday. Shit, what he did on Monday. Hell, what he did at Elimination Chamber. So yeah, like everything that he's did this week, just that story that he's been telling, um, is just been it's been phenomenal. Like, I can't even be mm. mad about it. Like, the man has been killing it. Uh, the way that he got his victories, these past three victories, like him complaining about, uh, oh, you know, everybody keeps cheating, and this is why I keep losing. And uh, how did he win those three times? Outside yeah. interference. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Beat Cody. The same way Cody lost at WrestleMania. Uh who did he face on SmackDown? Uh, LA Knight. LA, LA Knight. Yeah, yeah, same thing. And then Elimination Chamber, because of your boy Logan Paul, he won the Elimination Chamber. <laughs> hey, Twitch, your, uh, your, your mic's kind of messed up. It's probably because someone tried to call in, and so it kicked you, kicked your voice Yeah, out. so you, you literally might have to back out and come back in. Yeah. That's what I had to do. <laughs> But um, all right. Well, then give me uh. So we have my your, match of the week. Yeah, your match of the week. My match of the week. Ooh. Mmm. God, it's been so. Okay. Oddly enough, there's been a lot of good wrestling, even a little bit coming from Planned Parenthood. Mm. How about now? Oh, that is so good. much better. Awesome. Um. Ooh, what? Give me, give me the women's elimination chamber match because this is the second premium live event in a row that a group of women in a match have stolen the show. They yeah. did it at the Rumble. I feel like they did it at the chamber. Like, yeah, I, yeah it was predictable. But they did a good job telling that story, even though we knew that Becky was going to win. Like, it really did get to the point where it was like, 
oh, could they like it, it could they could have easily pulled a swerve is what I'm basically trying to say. Like it could have been any one of those six women. And uh Tiffany, as always, looked amazing. Like everybody, like all the women in that match, even Raquel. And I know people don't like Raquel, but even Raquel looked like looked amazing in that match. She was dominant. So, and just the eliminations. The eliminations were fun. Um, that finish, quick, fast, to the point. Not a fucking beat missed. It was just, it was great. It was great. So that's the reason why they. I'm gonna have to give that to them. I have to give it to the women's elimination chamber. Bet. Well, I'm gonna give you my match of the week, right? Which I didn't think like anybody was gonna say this match, so I was kind of like hoping no one was gonna pick it. And since Chaz is clearly wrestling, he's not gonna call this match either. Uh, but I'm gonna go a little different. Uh, I, I I liked. I I'm gonna be honest. You guys, both matches were were both fire. Uh, but uh, give me Chad Gable versus Ivar. Ooh, oh, that was really good, that's man. Awesome. <laughs> you know, that's that why was... I was having trouble. Like I was like, "There's so much good wrestling." That Chad Gable and Ivar match was the shit. Yo, yeah. that was such a great match. It's such a fun match to watch too. Like those two clearly tore the house down. Um, and you know, I mean, it was it was a ma- it was and let's be real, it was a throwaway match. But it was... yeah, man, like Chad Gable and Ivar, and then Ivar missing the moonsault, and then Chad hitting his was so on point. So I was like, yes. Let me get this. Uh, coldest wrestler of the week. I'm going to be honest, man. Uh, I know like he you know, he just wrestled recently, but I'm, I'm giving it to Sammy Guevara because nothing really stood out to me. He hasn't nothing been else. doing anything since he did that little, like where he disappeared for a little while after the whole Jericho thing. Yeah. He kind of just been eh. And then he hurts Jeff Hardy, which, by the way, I think was on purpose because how do you hurt both brothers in like a two year span? Like, what's the what like like what is the the, the chances of you hurting both brothers? Seriously, no, it's crazy. <laughs> Stranger things have happened, though. Stranger things have happened. I know he didn't uh, do it on purpose, but it was crazy. <laughs> so, as far as my hottest wrestler of the week, right? Um, I got a one A, one B, and a one C, right? And there's okay. a reason for our one C. So we're gonna go with one A, one A, one A, one B. Uh, Tiffany Stratton is my hottest wrestler of the week because if you're trying to make a star in a match that you know she's not gonna win, that elimination chamber match was on point. It yeah, showcased was. everything that she could do. It gave her all the character things that she needed. She got over with the crowd in Australia and did not over. Then the crowd turned on her because she blamed Australia for why she <laughs> lost, which was beautiful. <laughs> so I loved it. Uh, my one B is going to be Mustafa Ali because big shout outs to my man winning the X division title. I know. Uh, I, that man, I heard that match was fire. I am watching that tonight because I have to review it for Monday. And I heard that match was fucking fire. <laughs> yep. That was uh I was excited. Like I was like, dang man, because I was I was on the edge of my seat and I, I kind of had a feeling that was gonna happen anyway. And the title was changing hands. But I mean the match was great in itself. So I was like, bro, that's great. That's that's really good. My one good. C though is gonna lead into our first debate 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 topic. So before we get into the debate topic, let's talk. Let's hop around and see what's going on with uh because we got a lot of uh, comments coming in right now. I so see. Uh, starting with Key Evening, what's up? No, no. Uh, hottest is Tiffy time. A, I have to agree with Mr. Gold. Can't, can't can't disagree. Nope. Uh, I share the same hate for Chris Jericho. He irks my soul. <laughs> ah, I know, right? Oh, oh. <laughs> Drew has been on fire and he normally bores me. I mean, it's true, but he's yeah. this heel turn, he's he's done it. This, this, yeah, yeah, this redemption story for him has been pretty good. By the way, so. if I find out where Chris Jericho lives, I'm ringing this doorbell and punching him in the dick. <laughs> Did it happen to somebody? What? Oh, Orange Cassidy. It happened yeah. to him in this man. Yo, <laughs> <laughs> shout outs because like <laughs> Yo, who was it? Was it uh, Mike? Mike Bennett did it. Yeah, like, it was Mike. Just a straight jab right to the dick. <laughs> I was. <laughs> he did do that. Uh, so thank you, Mike Bennett. Doing... Appreciate it. Yeah, the women have been stealing the show over the men in the PLEs. It's true. I, yeah, I it is. It, they had. They've been killing it. Tiffany Strappen was that uh, was definitely the MVP. She's fire. She definitely yeah. is. Yes, she was. Uh, Tiffany should have uh, should have been congratulated for not having a wardrobe malfunction. 
True. <laughs> uh, Chad Gable is a wrestling god, and he can wrestle a burlap sack, and it'll be money. Hey, you know what? Uh, no lies detected in that he's one. He's not wrong. Yeah, like he's not wrong at all. I can see that. Nope. L. A. Knight. Uh, let's see. Has remained a stagnant since he lost the title shot. <laughs> I, I mean, I do, but the crowd still pops for him. They still love like, him though. Hey, Mr. Golden, you wrong for this one. Uh, Tiffany Stratton, I would say my, my 1D. And then he quickly changed that to say actually 2D. <laughs> <'cause Yeah>. you know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's definitely Tiffy time. She's going to be great on the main roster. I agree. I agree. Yeah, I she agree. is. She's going to do big yeah. stuff. Also, Kalani James. If if you guys haven't been watching Next Level, right? I yeah. level up. And then I've seen it. her on XT. Dude, she's Amazing. good. Dude, yeah. the women's roster in NXT. It's one of those where I was like really nervous when they took that that big ass crop of people that are on the main roster now, like killing it. Yeah, I was so nervous, but they have built it up nice and strong, so I ain't nervous no more until they take everybody else again and then have to they start have a rebuild. <laughs> yeah. yep. So I mentioned to you guys that we had a one A one. I had a one A one B and a one C. So my one C is Michael Chandler. And for those who don't know who Michael Chandler is, Michael Chandler is a UFC fighter. Uh, he was on Raw. And if you guys watched it, he was talking about calling out Conor McGregor. Uh, and then that's kind of sparked like this big debate topic on whether like the UFC. Uh, MM, uh, UFC, WWE kind of mix. Is it a good thing or bad thing? A lot of people had some crazy takes about it. Some people said it was bad. Some people said it was good. So our debate topic isn't so much is the TKO merger beneficial, but more or less, is it ruining both sports have or both forms of entertainment being in one under one umbrella, right? Um, and this was this was my thought process behind it, right? Michael Chandler gets on WWE. He calls out Conor McGregor, right? Um, not the best promo, right? But that's why I think it's smart to have some of these UFC fighters there with some of the WWE guys, right? To help teach them how to invoke emotions out of a crowd, right? The first thing that Michael Chandler said was like, yo, what's up, Anaheim? And then the crowd pop, right? It's our town. He, he said our town. That's our city, <laughs> right? And then like he proceeded to talk about being the most entertaining uh, fighter in the UFC roster. And then you know, proceeds to say, tells this, tells this two piece, right? You know, there's a guy, he's been ducking me for a long time. It's time that we settle this in the octagon. Conor McGregor, get your ass out of retirement and get in here, right? Get it back into the octagon. And I thought it was a great, I thought it was great. You know, and it, you could clearly see like he was not, he's not trained for this, right? He's not trained to showcase. But I think that's what's important was like, when you look at something like the UFC, right? A lot of people don't realize that, you have guys who are great fighters. You have guys who are great strike uh, grapplers. You have guys who are great submission artists. And now in the game, has changed so much that you have to set yourself apart. And I think having a great character is what's going to help bring pe eyes to the UFC, right? And we've seen this when it comes to people like Anderson Silva. We've seen this when it comes to guys like GSP. You've seen this when it comes to guys like, um, you know, uh, Colby Covington and Conor McGregor, right? Like these guys, Brock Lesnar, they all know how to sell fights. And I think that's what's going to be beneficial for guys in the MMA world. So then the contrast comes, well, how does it help people in the, in the WWE? These guys are world-class strikers. They will teach how to throw a proper punch or they'll teach how to do a proper roll, right, when you're getting thrown or how to land on your back safely, right? I know, I know those are things that get taught in wrestling schools, but you learn from guys who have to do it in live situations all the time. And so it I, looks real. Yeah, and it, you're making – and it, yeah, it. I mean – you know, when it comes to the UFC, it, it, it is real. Like Exactly. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. But they're doing it. Yeah, they're doing it like for real. <laughs> but like you you can you can learn how to do this. Right. And you can I think both companies can benefit from each other. But I just see a lot of bad takes and I wanted to get you guys' opinions on it. So where I'll throw this is, Damien, I'll let you go. And then Twitch, you can follow up and then we'll just wrap around. So. All right. So the beneficial part of this, right, is like you said, you know, they can all learn from each other. Point blank in general. Um, boxing, um, wrestling, MMA, um, hell, football, baseball, basketball, charisma. Yeah. The people that are big, they got charisma. The people that the fans love and that they pick out, they got charisma when they're on that camera. Charisma sells. If you can sell yourself, then you can sell fights. You can sell a game. You know what I mean? So... 
it was really cool to see him go off the chain like that and call out Connor. Like, yeah, it was a bit choppy. It wasn't perfect, but that had to, that took balls. Like, you just went on there and went ham. That was fucking cool. It was random as fuck. <laughs> and he was still going off when they panned away. It was great. <laughs> it was great. So I don't think it's a bad thing. When it, I guess if it gets bad, the way that it could go bad and go south is if you start to merge <laughs> everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's the way that it is now. Like, sure, UFC, UFC fighters showing up at, at a WWE event. That's fine. WWE wrestlers showing up at a UFC event. That's fine. Now, occasionally, you might get somebody that wants to wants to fight in an octagon that's a wrestler. It, it happens. And vice versa. <laughs> That's fine, but right. don't merge the shows. Please don't do that. Yeah, don't don't like do that. yeah, yeah, like we don't need like that like the UFC meets WWE kind of thing. Like that that no, please don't. No, no, don't do that. So yes, it's beneficial as long as they kind of keep it the way that they're going at this present point in time. And I think like they'll be beneficial and helpful to each other when it comes to selling shit. And selling their wrestlers and selling their talent and selling the fighters. So, nah, I say keep it going the way that it is. I I agree with Damien. I think it's it's going to be beneficial. Um, my issue comes in with where do you where do you draw the line? Like, obviously, we've seen people come from wrestling into MMA, CM Punk, and it didn't work too well for him. And then we've seen UFC fighters come in, Cain Velasquez, and it just it didn't work well for them. So at what point do you draw the line and be like, yes, it's cool that you came out and you called out Conor McGregor. Now you have an opportunity to bring people who maybe wouldn't order that fight. Maybe like, oh, well, I saw this guy on Raw. Maybe I should check this out. Uh, as long as as long as you know where to draw the line, I think this is a good thing. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I, I 100% agree. I, you know, you, you bring up like a good example of, you know, Cain Velasquez, right? Coming from the UFC and trying to get into it. And, you know, the funny thing was, is that when you watched him at, uh, what was he at? Um, right before, AAA. When you saw him at AAA, yeah. like that man was all over the ring. He was flying, he was picking it up, he was doing great. And then they brought him to the WWE and wanted him to be like, you're going to be the fighter type. And we're going to run this back with Kane and, Kane ended up injuring his knee right before like the whole thing at in uh in Saudi. But when you look at someone like Shayna Baszler or you look at uh you know Jasmine Duke, like let's be real, like she was picking up the game real quick. Yeah, she Ronda was. Rousey, like and as much as we want to shit on Ronda Rousey, like hey, she picked like, it up. She was doing picked great. It up. Yeah. And and going back to the other side of having wrestlers go over to MMA, look at Dave Batista. But yeah, Bobby Lashley. Bobby yeah, Bobby Lashley. Lashley. Brock, like Brock, I mean, yeah, and and let's be real, let's be real, and I'm gonna I'm gonna preface this for every for every person that we're gonna name, right? Yeah, you also have CM Punk, or you yeah. also have Kane Velasquez, right? On both yeah. sides of the fence, like yeah. it's it not gonna be like that but bad. It happens, happen. though. Yeah, but not it happens. The yeah, I mean, when it comes to any kind of Matt Riddle person that's <laughs> not, yeah, 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 like somebody that's not normally. You know, in that world, especially because, you know, wrestling has been doing it for years. Football players, basketball players, not everybody catches on. I mean, it just is what it is. Yeah. Like, you know, not everybody can be like, no offense, Logan Paul or Bad Bunny. Right. Or, or one of those, you know what I mean? Like, right. I don't know. I feel like the celebrities now are, I don't know, three, three million times better than your Lawrence Taylors or... Your your uh, Dennis Rodman's or Carl Malone or like anybody like that. So you know what's funny though is that you know and, and every once in a while we get like we get surprised, right? Uh, like Snooky is a perfect example of that. Like she actually we wasn't were, as horrible as I thought she was. Good. Yeah, we, that's what I'm, that, that's my yeah. point. We, we are a hundred percent ready to like boo this person out the building, right? <laughs> And then she hit that that double hands that double back handspring uh, elbow, and we were like, "Oh, 
Oh, wait a okay. minute. <laughs> 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 something. Yeah, what is this? Right? Where did we come from? Our tune. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like, and it's a great example of like, there's comes all these people who can come from the professional wrestling or professional sports and come into professional wrestling, right? Mayweather was another person, was another, yeah. is another great example. So I think it, it benefits because what, what I saw and what I understood, right, when Michael Chandler came on the show and he asked for that fight with Connor, right? And we can just, we, we can, we can highball this number, right? Let's just say 40% of the fans that are watching Raw, right, live and in in uh, in the stadium that night or in uh, the arena that night, 40% of them, we'll call them UFC fans. We'll just call it mixed martial fans, whatever, right? Yeah. They're, they're, they're fans. But you're talking about that other 60, right? Now you're looking at possibly, even if you got 10% of those fans, right, of WWE fans to watch that fight, that's a win. Even if yeah. you get 5% of them. That's a right? win. That's still All a because w. he came and cut one pro- one thing. He just talked about Conor McGregor. Now people are interested in who Michael Chandler is and wants to see that fight now because they're like, oh, I knew, I do know Conor. I didn't know that guy wants to fight Conor. I want to see that fight now. And I think that's right? such a big thing for both sports. It's going to it's it's going to legitimize both sides of things. So I'm definitely like, yo, I just I don't see a problem with it. Well, I'm one of those guys. I didn't know who that guy was until that night and i looked him up and was like oh you actually not that bad i want to see this (laughs) and i don't even watch like ufc like that but i want to see that like that drove that drove me in he started shooting that promo on raw and it took me a second to realize wait a minute conor mcgregor is retired yeah (laughs) hey conor come out of retirement i want to see that match i'd like to see it (laughs) now 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 and i'm just saying like People who aren't UFC fans all of a sudden are mixed martial arts fans. All of a sudden, like, oh wait, Connor, I know that name. He was supposed to be at WrestleMania. Like, I kind of want to watch that show now. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, no, so we're gonna move over. We're gonna talk about. Let's let's just jump into these comments real quick. Right, we we got a lot of build up. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, that happened. Uh, what happened with the the year? Remember when Undertaker Lesnar were in the UFC and uh, Undertaker was there, and and I think Brock had just lost. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Saying, yo, and even Brock was like, Yeah, I was a bit loopy when he was there. I don't even remember this interaction. <laughs> uh, not they were gonna go there. <laughs> yeah, they did that, they did that three match series. That's that's what came out of it in WWE like years later, right? Um, I think the, per- the merger is going to help people give WWE more respect for, for being a combat sport. I think so. I think so. Yeah, I mean, if a people little can, bit of a little extra clout. Yeah, a little bit. Now they got some. They got some people coming over. I like that. I mean, in the UFC, that's that comment from before. Uh, did anyone kick Shayna Baszler in the dick? No. No. <laughs> you, you I know wouldn't I like do that about, to her. <laughs> you know what I liked about Shayna though, and I still like about Shayna is that she is legitimately a threat in the ring, regardless. And she still trains Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and mixed martial arts. Like, yeah, they had a, they had that uh, sparring session with her and uh, Ronda, and yeah. they were just going back and forth like it was crazy. Yeah, no, she's a legit threat every day, all day, every day. Like, mm-hmm. I, don't, I wouldn't mess with Shayna. At I'm not all. trying to run into her in a dark alley. Yeah, I'm not trying to run into her in a lit alley. This is also <laughs> very true. I'm just not trying to run into her, period. <laughs> okay. Facts. If she, if she like, was walking towards me, I'm, like, leaning against a wall. Like, trying to stay I won't ask for an autograph. I'm nope. just a picture. I'm just going to let her be. Yep. She because... seems nice as hell, though. But no, nah. really no, nah. trying to get beat with my own arm, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, Mr. Hey, Golden Twitch says, talks. Hey, Twitch talks, <laughs> yeah, I do from time to time. He Here says, uh, Welcome, it's nice to hear a different opinion. Uh, it's the toilet Taylor Swift effect, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I, I believe, I believe Taylor, hey, you know, <laughs> hey, she won the Super Bowl, fans. hey, she did she won, yeah, she won the Super Bowl, man, exactly. I agree. Uh, let's go. Alberto Del Rio had a few UFC oh, MMA fights. Oh, you're you know, right. He, he did. When he was wearing his mask. Yep. Oh, you're right. I his, forgot about that. That was his character. His character wore a luchador mask in the octagon. <laughs> My man had no peripheral vision. <laughs> None was oh, Head kicks for is, days. <laughs> that is so dangerous. <laughs> uh, Last Legend came from basketball. She's doing well. There's a uh, good and bad form of all sports. It's true. Yeah, I have true. to give it to Lash Legend. Like I, I remember seeing her from Jump, 
Like she's always had that character and charisma. Yeah. And was able to talk. And, you know, her in rings got better. And ever since she's jumped in there with uh Metaphor. Oh, I love Metaphor. I love Metaphor. <laughs> Dude, I love that group. Hey, can we No and Dar is my nigga. I'm just putting that out there. Can we hey we gotta give some love too because like, you know, our thoughts and prayers go out with Shotzi. I know you're gonna be healing from your ACL. I'm glad that things were successful. But Same. yo, that match with uh uh Valkyrie and Legend was right? so good being called on the fly. I know. <laughs> you know? And they called that one on the fly. On the fly. Dude, just that like that whole situation, like even like the beginning of uh Valkyria and, and Shotzi was really good. Yeah. Then that like injury out of nowhere, and then having Lash come in there like a split second later, like they were on their P's and Q's, dude. I, yep. They that was fast. Shout out to the ref. Yeah. 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 Shout it's out to Sean guys. for the for the quick uh yeah. the quick switch. <laughs> oh, I was just gonna say shout out shout out to the ref because fuck you guys for those who keep saying that the ref it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, ref always matters. What's good, bros? What's what, up? What's what up, it man? do? Uh, I question the legitimacy of boxing when Buster Douglas knocked out Tyson. I've had my bouts, uh, doubts in the UFC, also especially when Ross, Ronda lost the first time. No, Ronda called her own knockout. I don't know if you guys remember that or not, but a few I weeks before she got knocked that. out, she said she was going to get hit with a head kick, and she did. She got caught with a head kick. I think there was a lot of things that went on with Buster Douglas, especially fighting in Tokyo. Uh, I don't think the crowd was as hyped as they were should have been or could have been if it was bought in the U.S. But let's be real, Buster Douglas had just lost his mom and said he was gonna uh, win that fight. So you know, yeah. I give I give props for props for due. Yeah, dude, he fought. He did, and he won. <laughs> I, I agree. Give me Shogun. Give me Shogun. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not trying to fight Shogun. <laughs> I'm good. He got two bad knees, and he's still gonna whoop my ass. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a that's a mess. That's crazy. <laughs> that's messed up. Uh, Twitch slammed me. He threw a homemade casket. Before. Well, man, come on. you got you got to let that go. Oh, I, I I saw the video that way. They man trying to get this work. <laughs> oh, yo, look. How about this? Twenty twenty five. I got you. As soon as I get this shoulder fixed, just tell oh, me when man. and where. I so, got you. <laughs> I'm trying to get this match. You, you yeah, have. You've been waiting for it. No, you're right. I got you, though. Uh, I miss Ricardo Rodriguez. Actually, you know what? Uh, 3LA, is that what it's called? Uh, they, they're doing some great things in, in Pennsylvania. So if you get a that's chance. That's what to, I heard. Yeah, yeah pay attention. Heard. Three Legacies is, is real good. I'm I, I'm super hyped with it. Uh, what's up, Phil? The what president of wrestling has joined us. I love, I love uh, when Mr. Stamper stops by and gives a stamp of approval to our show. So. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. Um, did he ever wrestle in WWE? Ricardo Rodriguez? Yeah, he um he had the the short spot, the short spot uh come in. And he, had, he had a couple things. Remember, he drove like the Pinto. Yeah, <laughs> he came out of vertical <laughs> music. He came out the dumb Pinto, and then right. there was a. Uh, and then he, yeah, I think he had a couple matches, and then they just yeah, he had a few him. matches. He did have a few matches as his ring announcer. That's what it was. Yeah. Three Legacies Wrestling. Thank you, Phil. Yeah. Appreciate that. So let's jump into our actually. Let's jump into everybody's favorite segment here on the podcast. Well, on this show, at least. Ooh, oh, who is my dumbass of the week? I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to put Dave Meltzer up there. He's been fucked up this week badly. <laughs> no. So I'm going to put Meltzer up there. Um, I'm also going to put Tony because uh, at first I wasn't going to, and then I heard that whole thing with CMLL and the, the way that it actually went down and the way that that deal is going on, which mm -hmm. I talk more extensively on the Villains Lounge about. But yo, Tony, come on, you gonna do that really? All right, so okay, and then Chris Jericho just by proxy because I can't stand. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny and i think that's about it i think those three i think that's a good a, a good one unless anybody else has anybody else they want to put on there i don't have anybody to no. put on there this week just because i wasn't i mean i guess I, if always i could always put the the internet wrestling community we could oh, God, always yeah. put IWC on there yeah um, true 
actually so while we're talking about it i'll go ahead and i'll put because you know chaz isn't here to do all these things and you know that's that's what happens whenever you get put in second command and you still have to run the show is you have to like put the tweets out there for everybody <laughs> <laughs> so i gotta put this i gotta put this poll out for everybody so they can they can vote on it and you guys can vote on it too uh let's see who's the dumbass of the week <laughs> um wait so we gotta go back was it tony tony khan mm-hmm. uh who else did i say chris jericho chris jericho and dave, meltzer. Project, and dave meltzer. Okay. he'll be a first he is actually a first which i'm surprised actually i should put anthem on there just because just because man, you know what? It do, oh yeah, I forgot they are in my in my notes for the week. Let's put Anthem on there because they ain't looking too great either. Okay, we'll take off uh we'll take off the IWC. You guys can watch right. one day. All there right, you so go. We'll, we'll, we'll give you pass. <laughs> we'll put the post up there. You guys go vote. Um if you guys want to, it's live right now. So you guys go check it out. And uh yeah, let us know who you think the dumbass of the week is. Uh jump back in real quick. Everybody, yay, because they're all excited about your dumbass of the week. <laughs> Get some laughs going on. Uh Tony, shocker. <laughs> exactly. You shouldn't be shouldn't be surprised. I would put Chaz on because he's Chaz. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Uh WWE for constantly inter- uh, for the constant interference by the bloodline. It's getting well, should we put the time. bloodline on there? <laughs> uh, it's already too late. I put the I put the tweet out there. Now <laughs> I know this day, we could. Uh have they won one match without interference? Uh, I mean, no. <laughs> oh, and then that, my camera decides to go unplugged. All right, cool. Uh, I see and we're back. There we go. Uh, they shouldn't. No, they That's should like, not no, win without interference. It should always be interference. They should always. They should always annoy you. Mm-hmm. So They're let's jump into. Hair. Let's jump into Chaz's debate topic because that's what he wanted to talk about. So, uh, but he's not here. So exactly. Actually, let me take this comment down real quick. And then is Becky Lynch over pushed? That is uh that is the debate topic. So uh Twitch, I'll let you start this one off and then Damien, you can follow and I'll just wrap up. All right. All right. This is kind of a yes and no thing because it seems like when a bunch of the people on the women's side of the roster are injured is when I I feel like we mainly see Becky start to get pushed. Uh, on the other side of it, you you could argue that, you know, they have such a stacked roster. Why not have somebody else win that chamber match that probably could have used it a little bit more than Becky? Uh, I don't. Part of me wants to say that I don't think Becky would be as popular if Naya didn't shatter her face the way she did, because I don't think we would have got the man gimmick the way we did. We probably would have got it sooner or later down the line, but I feel like that kind of sped it up and they just used the momentum from that and her standing in the crowd gushing blood to rocket her to the moon. So it's really a yes and no kind of statement. Mm. Okay, I I can vibe with that. Um, I'm going to say just flat out, fuck no. (laughs) And this is the my reasonings why. Now, who's who's our current world's women champion on Raw? How long has she had that championship? For a minute, exactly. Um, and who was the champion before her? Charlotte? Isn't that who Rhea beat? Was it Charlotte? I f- that was last WrestleMania? Is that who she? Faced? Yeah, I think that's That's right. what I say, yeah. Because she finally beat Charlotte. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This would be the second WrestleMania, and Becky Lynch wasn't important. Like, you know, getting into that second WrestleMania. She was doing the stuff in NXT. She was moving aside and letting these other women get built up and then put in that spot when she is needed to be put into that spot. So no, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think she's been over pushed. I think she's been pushed just right. Yeah. I think I'm going to, I'm going to lean, uh, I'm going to lean with the, the super villain on this one. Uh, no, I don't think she's been over pushed. I think the thing is, is like, she's kind of just like 
I, I feel like she's like the she gets put in there whenever they need like a home run hitter. And when they don't need her, they just sit her back on the bench. Cause yeah. she I think she's at that point of a career where she's pretty much she's pretty bulletproof. Like she put over Nia Jax. She didn't have to, you know what I mean? Exactly. They, they really needed they really needed Nia to be a credible person. <laughs> so she beat Becky Lynch, you know what I mean? And Becky at that point it was like whatever. Like that point is like, okay, well, Becky lost and Becky lost to Nia, but you know, Becky can kind of take that loss. So it was kind of it was kind of cool. Um I think this story was kind of like always kind of designed around her in the thought process. Like, hey, you know, like Becky, Becky's done a lot of stuff for us. And now it's kind of time for us to kind of like pay her back for what she's done for us, especially the things that she did at NXT, the things that she's yeah. done and, and uh, you know, elevating that title up and then putting over uh, Valkyrie and making her the new star that she is. Putting yeah. over Tiffany, even though she took the belt from Tiffany Stratton, she, she put her over. She put her over. She, yeah, she put her, her over. over. Even with the rematch, she put her yeah. over. Like, and it, then they it, went to, and they go to the main roster, and she's just there. She's just there to elevate the the talent. I think she's at that point of kind of like, she's kind of like at that the Austin Rock point, and I, a lot of people would be like, "What?" Like, she can she could handle a loss, and then she you could put her in the title picture, and it's a legitimate reason why. It's not like, oh, well, she hasn't won a match in, like, three months, but I kind of want to see her win this title. Yeah, right? <laughs> and that's, that's kind of how, like, this is what this has been. Yeah. The story is she's trying to get back to her man, like, base. So, like, all these losses, all these setbacks, like, wasn't sure she was going to even make the chamber. Made the chamber. Never been in one actually pulled off the victory like you know she she had a lot of losses since she came back like you know putting over bianca yep she did she's done a lot she's done a lot yeah. with, with with the women's and it, what i think is so cool is that having having becky be as dominant as she was for a while right and then all of a sudden having her put over other talent just adds depth to the women's division so it now does. you have – now we can look at the six women – you said it earlier, right? The six women that were in the Elimination Chamber, you had no problem if they were they were running the match with Rhea yeah. in the singles competition. Like yep. all of them had a argue, arguably a good reason. Bianca, Liv, right? Raquel Rodriguez, right? And then when they all came onto – and, you know, Becky cut that promo on Raw and all the women came out and they all justified why they should yes. be there, right? Liv especially. Liv is, a, is yeah. another person – She's like, I was the last person to beat Rhea Ripley before she went on this run. Like, yep. Oh. yep. What? And then you forget, and you're like, oh, that's true. Yeah. And now, like, it's like legit true. She actually like beat her, and so that, think, that's what I said. It made it cool. Yeah. So Becky I think will Becky, always, Becky will always be that in case of emergency break glass. A hundred percent. A hundred percent is what she is. You know, because yeah. I think. I think this year is WrestleMania, right? The two women's matches for the two titles, like they just they make sense. Yeah. Oh no, they, hands down, they make sense. Yeah, I, I 100, I love it. I love every minute that we're getting of it. I love the Bailey matchup, right? Because yeah. obviously that's telling her story. But then it also does something else. It's reestablishing, you know. And I know a lot of people will be like, "There's not a thing yet." The Horsewomen, right? Like, yeah. you have, and you have three of the four. And I know Charlotte's injured right now, but three of the four women are reestablishing themselves. In, in in the roster, right? And right yeah. now we see Bailey and Becky are both holding down the top and they're like, yo, we're elevating this team as well as spearheading our own way. And I, yeah. I love it. Both women have done it equally on the respective shows that they've been on. Like look what Bailey has done. Yeah. With damage control. Just just in that with damage control in general. Like since right. she's came back from her energy our uh, injury at uh SummerSlam, and even before that, like the shit. I, I'm sorry, during the during the Thunderdome era and the pandemic era of wrestling, the most entertaining thing that was coming on my goddamn TV was Bailey and Sasha Banks. Yeah, hands okay. down. Then that was from any company. Yeah, they were they yeah, they two were the most entertaining thing. All I I don't know. Bailey turning heel was probably the best thing ever for her. Yeah. Like her dropping in the hugger gimmick and actually coming into herself. Like the hugger gimmick was her, but I feel like eventually she was growing out of that. She was yeah. maturing, becoming 
more comfortable with herself and like i'm not a fan anymore i'm here to win fucking titles and hurt people and once she did that and then became uh you know karen bailey <laughs> look yeah. that character has inspired my wife to make a karen character oh, <laughs> I, I tell you that right now so like that just that just goes to show you like Ah, like this women's wrestling in general has taken such a huge fucking leap, and I'm talking about like in all spectrums. Oh yeah, yeah. Like you know, pretty much in every company. Even I mean, AEW is probably doing the worst, but they're trying. Yeah, they, at least they have talented women on the roster, even yeah. if they're not being used like they should. Well, and it's something that we've talked about, right? And I, I remember for the longest time we were talking about how Impact has the most depth, right? When it came yes, to women's wrestling. Yes, they do. They do. The knockouts division by far was like one of the best divisions. And I will argue to say that I think WWE is like right now is is closing that gap. Like, and I'm not talking about like we're still like ways away. No, we're like there. It's close. It's really close. Like on especially with all three brands. Yeah. Like it's it i don't know it's one of the it's one of those you let me tell you where i think that the gap like really closed and kind of became a lot closer is royal rumble yeah for that I, I mean i'm just saying i guess that's when my notice and, that's and when i say this because you had jordan grace show up there you had naomi come back you had it was to the point where you didn't they didn't have to bring anybody that is like not there full time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's how you know you have a good Royal Rumble when you don't have to say, uh, hey, I need you to come back for the Royal Rumble real quick. I mean, you're not gonna win, but we just need bodies. Right. That's a great thing. That's a great feeling. And they did it what for both, right? Yeah, both. Yeah. Neither neither one, men or women, had any kind of legends. Old timers, no. you know, part timers. It, it was, it's. I don't know. It was just. It's just been crazy. It's all like, current, active roster. Yeah. Yep. So yep, yep. I mean, I know the turning point for that was a was before that, but I'm just saying it was one of those like big aha moments for me yeah, at I, the Royal I, Rumble. I agree. You know what I mean? On that, I agree. It started a little bit beforehand. But like you said, Damien, it really became noticeable at the Rumble, in my opinion. Yeah, I would have said uh, after after SummerSlam when uh, Ronda left, and everybody's yeah. like, "Who's gonna fill in the gap now that Ronda's gone?" And it's like, "Yo, there's this woman after woman after woman <laughs> yeah, after woman, right? after, woman like, after woman." I was like, "Oh, we are we are deep in this now, <laughs> right?" <laughs> Trin like. Naomi coming back and like Jordan, like and Jordan, like, no disrespect, right? Jordan Grace is a great champion, right? When she showed up to the Rumble, she fit in. She, it was just like, she, you know, she was just like another person in there, right? Like, like she belongs. Crazy, yeah. Right? Was, like, she fits in. So it just tells you, like, the women impact division is like really deep. And then to see Jordan transition over into WWE just for one spot, right? She's there. She's hanging and banging for like twenty minutes, and you're like, oh wow. Like no, like the impact division is tough and right yeah you know, i can't wait i can't wait to see aew get to that level right and i know it's gonna be a while but i can't wait to see it because your talent is there you know we talk about it i talk about it at nauseum man like they got Tony, tons of great know, talent yeah tons of great talent and and you're just adding on more and more talent i know like like you said storm Perazzo, uh you got sky Britt blue. baker sky blue julia hart uh, and Britt Baker hasn't been around in months. exactly, months. yeah, but yeah, yeah uh, shit, all the women that are on freaking uh, Willow. ROH, Willow, yeah, Trisha Dora, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like the, the, the roster is stacked, Abaddon. and it just Abaddon, yeah, and it just sucks that, like, it's like what? So they got two segments just past Dynamite, yeah, but both segments yep. were combined as one. It was like Tony squash Matt or what? Oh, Tony! Who the hell did Tony? Yeah, face? Tony's match and then Deanna Prazo's match with uh, Madison Rain. Yeah, so yeah, Tony squash match and then right after Perazzo facing uh, Madison Rain. So it was like, 
why didn't you why couldn't y'all separate those i get that the stories are combined but why the fuck couldn't you separate those and give these women time you just kind of yep. mesh them all into one yep. like the women are lucky if they get a segment and yep. i know in the beginning it wasn't like that like they were getting some more they were getting a little bit more tv time and it's now they're kind of being pushed to the wayside and it it feels like early wwe yeah yep. Because you know what? Another match that I need y'all to go check out was on TNA's uh, Hard to Kill as well. Uh, the Decay versus Ultra MK was. Ooh, I have that saved. Oh my God. I got to watch that. Like I got to say, I got to watch. I got I to gotta catch up. Tell you, I'll be women's, watching that. Women's, women's wrestling, hands down, man. Just a bunch of bad women. Just It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. I'm yeah, so glad. All right, let's jump to these comments real quick. So uh, Becky Becky did not need to win the chamber to go to Mania. She could have had just had a regular match. We yeah we can we can we can agree to disagree. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think there should be a section of WWE that's famed for uh, comedic wrestlers: Goldust, r Truth, Santino, Sandow, the Sun Double. His thing that he's doing at NWA now, you guys should see. Sandow is amazing. Uh, uh, he's Aaron. always been amazing. Yeah, yeah he's Aaron always been amazing. amazing. I like what he was doing in freaking Impact. Yep, when yeah. he was there, dude, that was great. Uh, let's see. Uh, Liv and Rhea's oh. storyline had more depth than Rhea, uh, Rhea and Becky. I agree. I agree with that a lot. But you know, it does. But for WrestleMania, Rhea beating Becky at WrestleMania is bigger than her being Liv. Yep. Sorry, yeah. I I don't mean the. I want to go back to the last comment. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. Um, yeah, Goldust, Archer, Santino, and Sandow belongs in the Hall of Fame. Period. Period. There's no se- extra section for them. No. They deserve to go in there. Period. Agreed. So yeah, they don't. They don't need a special section. They just need to go in, and eventually uh, they will. Yes, it was Charlotte. Uh, Cargill Ripley. <laughs> Yo, I do want to see that. I'm, I definitely want to see that. Yeah. Give it time. It, it's going to happen. Yeah. And it's going to happen. I want to see that. And Becky, there's so many matches I'm looking forward to. I know. Me too. It comes with Jade or any of them. So Charlotte is pushed more than Becky. There's no line. That's, that's facts. Statement. Yeah. yeah. Agree with you that. don't bet against the queen. I don't think it was over pushed. I know she's a draw, but I don't care <laughs> to see Becky versus Rhea. I feel you on that. I, feel I can respect that. that. I can respect that. I respect that. Uh, Bianca and Rhea has more depth storyline, in my opinion, than Becky and Rhea. Uh, you know what? If you can tie it in with uh, NXT properly, yes. And I know this this regime of I – I don't want to use that word, but this regime of Hunter being at NXT and then Sean being – or Hunter being on the main and then Sean being at NXT, you can intertwine that really well because they did a great job when they were bringing it down when yeah. – Rhea was, I think it was Rhea was the SmackDown champion. Becky was, or not Becky, um, Bianca was the Raw. And then uh, Raquel Rodriguez was the NXT Women's yeah. Champion. Yeah. yeah. And they had that whole tie in. It was really a beautiful thing to see. So I definitely, I, I agree. They could, but it's too late. Yep. If they're they all going to be that, that should have started in January. They're all going to be cannon fodder for J- uh, Jade. That's, you know what? <laughs> I ain't gonna front like when no, they start it probably Jade, is. They probably will be. Yeah, a lot of women like hey when Shotzi when, when Shotzi comes back, yeah, she's gonna get crushed. When Candice LeRae steps up, she's gonna get crushed. Indy Hartwell gonna get crushed. Wow. All gonna get crushed. They they yeah. are. They are. This is what it is. Uh, Bailey and EO is gonna be fire. Hundred percent agree. Yes, it can't, is. can't lie. Uh, Bailey can do it all. She's such a great face. Heal anything, and then she needs. Yeah, she she's great. She's great. Uh, uh, she gave uh, Bailey to Belly uh, off the ropes to Naya on TV when she was still a face. That was my favorite Bailey moment. I like she that. Do, I oh, remember she that. She did do that, didn't she? Uh, like I said, I love Bailey. I've always loved Bailey. Bailey. I've loved Bailey, Bailey since was day one. Yo, and like I said, heel Bailey ain't nothing like it. Yo, awesome. Uh, Kong. This is a great shout. Awesome Kong. Uh, I agree. Awesome Kong was uh was amazing, and Karma was amazing too. I did yeah, the sh- it was short lived. Yeah, it was short. And I wish I could have saw more. And it sucks that the things ended the way that they ended. And I feel really bad for her because of the mental state that she was in at the time. And I'm happy that she was able to get past that. 
Mm-hmm. But Awesome Kong is just fucking awesome. Like, yeah, look what amazing. she did in TNA. Yeah. Her and Gail Kim. That's yep. all I got to say. Her and Gail Kim. Kim. <laughs> uh, let's go. Uh, thank you, Trips. <laughs> For sure. Uh, Rhonda had one of the best WWE debuts with Angle versus Trips and Steph. She did. She did. Yeah, I mean, she there's, did. there's no doubt. You know, and at that time she was just a celebrity too. Like they, yeah. Was she was she signed to him? No, yet? not yet. Not then. No. Not yet. She was, it was just, a little yeah. bit after that, I think. Jordan definitely fit in well. It was a great look for Impact and herself. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Negative one versus Chaz. They weigh about the same. Hey, you <laughs> know what? That I mean, I, I can't. Oh. <laughs> I kind of want to see this match now. <laughs> I kind of want to see it now too, and they probably do. Look at that! I think negative one has more muscle. <laughs> <laughs> Chaz, didn't even, Chaz is probably in the ring right now. He has no probably idea. no <laughs> clue. Uh, implant Buster to Dolph. A. Hey. Yep. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's jump into our last. Well, actually, we're gonna go into a new segment uh, we wanted to bring for you guys. It's called around the turnbuckle and really what we're going to talk about here is just going to be a couple minutes we're all going to bring up one thing that we all just kind of enjoy throughout the week of wrestling and that's what we're going to talk about real quick so uh damien kicked us off all right so (laughs) uncle dave put out his awards this weekend from my understanding and i took a look at him and uh yeah, Tony's not the Booker of the Year. It's great. <laughs> He's not even Promoter of the Year either. So I like to give shout outs to Mr. Paul Levesque for being the Booker of the Year and Mr. Nick Khan for being the Promoter of the Year. That's what tickled my fancy. <laughs> and I will talk about it more in depth on the Villains Lounge. This is going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> That, that, that was going to be what I brought up, but I mean, for the most <laughs> part, for me, uh, uh, Mustafa Ali winning the the X Division Championship was was a big spot for me. That was yeah. pretty tight. <laughs> yeah, I uh, just, I don't want to call it a cop out, but uh, I'll, I'll I'll bring this up right. So, uh, TNA is hard to kill. The whole pay per view from top to bottom was just fire. So Scott. Scott did a great job setting this up <laughs> because yeah, he did. you know no, ain't nobody did. on Impact, yeah, ain't nobody at the TNA play, ain't nobody at Anthem was gonna be like, yeah, you know it's gonna be a great pay per view if we do all these things together too. So, like <laughs> it was never gonna be a thing. <laughs> like, no, no, uh, this was all the the leftover. Yeah, uh, Shaw and Grace was a sleepy uh, sneaker of a of a pick. So I mean, seeing that match going down to was great to see. I I, I have nothing, man. Just. TNA just tearing it down was was amazing, and then um, you know, big shout outs to uh uh, uh dang it, Braun making his his debut, like the SmackDown uh, debut. Yeah, uh, the guy that he wrestled made Braun look amazing. Yep, I have to give that guy a shout out. Like, I I I've been I heard his name. I'm gonna go check him out. Um, I know he's like, he. Did a lot in Singapore mm. on the wrestling scene. So I'm gonna I'm gonna check his eye. I got his name written down somewhere. But yeah, I gotta go check him out because I was impressed. And then really quick before we jump to our third topic, uh big shout outs to Nick Nemeth, by the way. Uh your new new Japan Pro Wrestling Global Champion. <laughs> I heard, I heard I was literally just sitting here thinking about that, wondering if it was a figment of my imagination or <laughs> it actually happened. Yeah, I, you know, you're right, though. I, I heard, I, I did hear something about that, so yeah, congratulations, bro. You deserve it. Yeah, it was a big, Hands big now you deserve it, buddy. Hell yeah. So, that's our, that's our, you know, quick around the buckle. I think originally Chaz and I wanted to call it just the 360, but I was like, nah, we gotta go around the turnbuckles, because I feel like if we call it anything else, it's, we're we're gonna be lames for it. All right, so let's get into our last debate topic. It's one, it's controversial, and I kind of want to hear what everybody else has got to say about it. Is it Rock versus Cody or Rock versus Roman? Kick us off, Twitch. Oh, mm-hmm. 
I see. Argue with yourself real quick. I'm right back. Does it have to be rock anything? (laughs) Uh, I just I and and to to be very fair with this, I was too once a rock fan, but I feel like that time has come and gone. Like you're on the board now. Like that's. In my opinion, that's like Dana White hopping in the UFC octagon to fight, you know, Cain Velasquez or John Jones or something like that. Like, I I don't uh, want to see Rock that. versus Roman, so I guess I'm going to have to go Rock versus Cody. <laughs> that's your either or? That's All right. Or, yeah. <laughs> so you're going to pick Rock versus Cody. All right. So, um, all right. This is how I'm going to go with this. I'm going to be a little sneaky with it. So um, I want to see Rock versus Roman just because of, you know, the story. However, I don't want to see it as one of the main events of WrestleMania. So if I don't get to see that because of that, I'd rather see Rock versus Cody. Like I want to see Rock versus Roman. But if Rock versus Cody will lead into Cody and Roman, then I'm good. <laughs> Just don't fuck up Roman and Cody. <laughs> Hell, give me both. Give me Rock versus Cody and Rock versus Roman. Just don't fuck up Roman and Cody. <laughs> That's all I ask. And uh, you know what? And like I said, though, but even ah, okay. So I've been giving that some thought too about Cody. I am at this point where it comes to Cody finishing the story. It doesn't have to be at WrestleMania. He never said it had to. He I know. And you want me to tell you? Yet. And you want me to tell you who changed my mind? O'Shea Jackson Jr. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Listening to that interview uh, that he did, uh, it, it, I don't know. It was like listening to him. He's like, you know what? Though you're right, because like you said, he never said it had to be at WrestleMania. So, I don't know. Maybe give us Rock versus Roman at WrestleMania and let Roman keep on going until, like, I don't know, Survivor Series and let Cody beat him there. Yep. <laughs> Doom. Yeah. I, you know, I kind of like that. I like that where he wins at the, the, the pay per view that his father came up with. Yeah. That, yeah, that would be a good one. I yeah. like it. Yeah. I like it. I'm not mad at it. Uh, for me, uh, I'm going to be real, man. I want. Rock versus Cody, because Cody is gonna sell his ass off oh, yeah, more yeah. than Roman will. <laughs> yeah, he will. And I know Roman will sell. I 100 percent know that. It's just <laughs> I kind of want to see Cody just get his ass kicked a lot by the Rock first, <laughs> and then come back and win. <laughs> so if I have to pick one or the other, I'm gonna go with that route. Um, but my for real, my answer would be just yes. Like let me just get both. Matches. <laughs> like that's what, what I, I say. Like just. I, this is the E. I can I can just get both these matches. It's not like the UFC where it's like you only get to watch these guys. Twice. Nah, let me get them all. Yeah, yeah. Now give me give, give me all of it. Shit. I mean, I'm okay with the tag match too if they still do that. Cody I'm Seth okay versus with Rock and Roman. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Give that to me night one. I'm cool. And then give me both of those title matches night two. Drew versus <laughs> Seth and Cody versus Roman. And I can go right. home happy. There'll be a lot of people pissed off because they'll be like, "Why, do, why, why can't uh, such and such get a uh, on the show? Like, because they're not good enough, <laughs> right? <laughs> they are. They're all great. <laughs> uh, look, no, we're trying to sell tickets to put asses in seats. We're man. trying to sell tickets. We're trying to get you paid. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Listen, just just enjoy your spot on the Andre the Giant Battle Royale. <laughs> <up. laughs> You're gonna make the money. Just go yeah. about it. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, I would accept that spot. Just- I would do. That's a and payday. Let me, one, let me get the quickest elimination. Not me oh, eliminating yeah. someone. Just me being eliminated. Oh yeah, but dude. I'll be- I get thrown out. I'm good. Oh, yeah. Let, let me get back- that Santino treatment. <laughs> yeah. Well, my night's finished. I get to sit back and watch WrestleMania and enjoy myself. So I, and I, I know what I got. I got a spot at WrestleMania, and y'all don't. Like, exactly. I get a memory. You, you get to you get to pay for the tickets that I'm watching. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm exactly. <laughs> like we didn't come to see you. We came to see you, Rock versus 
or we could see Roman versus Cody. Well, Let's guess who else is in a match? F- MFers. I'm right. there too, <laughs> getting thrown out. Let me be. You know what? Let me take. Let me take. Uh, so if you guys remember, let me let me be one of the security guards for uh for uh, just a person. I don't care. Don oh me. yeah, I could do that. Yeah, I do <laughs> yeah, that. Sign me up. Yeah, I me do, do that. that. Shoot. Then you get it. Then I'm gonna be like, yeah, you paid for, for WrestleMania, but you saw me. Exactly. <laughs> I will be uh, security real quick. <laughs> right? I'll be security real quick. Wouldn't even right. turn that down. Jumping in. So the new talent getting over. Yes. Uh Braun waiting for Braun and Gunther. And yeah, I Braun and Gunther oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely match. I want to see. Oh, yeah, I definitely want to see that. Dante Chen is the guy. That's it. That's it. Yeah. That's it. That's it. And didn't he wasn't he he and Zia Lee like in some faction right that, that didn't is go him nowhere. that yeah. is him i was wondering why he looks so familiar <laughs> that is him you're right Zia Lee, like came out so strong after that and like that was really cool at first like that was. little faction at first and then it went nowhere and then they ruined it like I'm they just, totally uh, did ruin it that was vince's fault wasn't it? nxt 2.0 yeah that was vince that was vince's fault <laughs> Uh, yeah, we need more 50 year old champions. Well, you know what? If AJ Styles wins, he probably be one of those guys too. Because that man is what is he like 46 years old? Yeah, 40. listen, 50 yeah. is the new 30 right now. Just yeah, by the my WWE. Age. <laughs> I look, Jeez, they're all look at Rant. I am 44 years old and still can go. So you're missing a couple zeros 44 million. Yeah, I was Sorry like, yeah, that. I was like. A few. <laughs> My bad. Uh, Forty solo. Yes, I would take that match. That'd be fun. That'd be fun. Just, and I would have I would have solo squash the rock. Lots That's an interesting pick. Yeah. It's an interesting way. Just rock comes in, does the shtick right, throws the throws the three punches, goes to spit in his hand. Solo the thumb right to the throat. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> One two three. One two three. I, you know, I can fuck with that. I can fuck with that. Yeah. Everybody's so excited. They're so excited. Like, yeah, Rock, get it in. Bang. <laughs> he just took the thumb. <laughs> the thumb the throat. over. Yeah. Uh, Rock versus Cody Night 1. Cody versus Roman Night 2. Having Cody go over. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Uh, Solo is upset about Rock getting the <laughs> uh, and the shots turn on the yeah, one hundred percent. Let's see, Fatal Five Way with all the Samoans, Jimmy J, Solo, uh, Roman, and the other five too. Actually, you know what? Let me get uh, bring in bring in Jacob Jacob yes. Fatu. Yes, I've been waiting for them to bring that man in. Yep. So, but they're like they're, they're listen like i think people forget right because just because like rock's there too right but we're forgetting like lance is still around he's still yeah messing. uh uh what's his name uh the other the other fatu he's at uh reality of wrestling right yeah. now yeah zilla zilla fatu? yeah zilla yeah, yeah. zilla my god there's several. Bro. There's several there's legitimately so on the indie scene and on the West Coast, on West Coast indie scene, there's the Samoan dynasty. It's all of them. Rikishi is there training. Them. Yeah. <laughs> like, come on, man. It's like, they're, it's they're, crazy. they're deep. They're deep. And there's like 13 of them. Right. Yeah, right? right <laughs> I'm like, bro, they just multiply. It's crazy. Yeah, they are. Uh, Rock can give one more match and then just go back to the boardroom. I wouldn't be mad. I wouldn't be mad either. Nope. He'll make it a Samoan Battle Royale. I would appreciate that. Right? <laughs> I want I Roman to get thrown out first. Right? <laughs> just because. Just because. Just because. Nemeth, how old is he? Uh, he's 44? I think he's, yeah, I think he's about my age. I think he's about my age. He's really close to my age. Yeah, somewhere in there. My fictitious, my fictitious age. My do uh, do yeah. a Lesnar Goldberg to Rock? Yes. Uh, yep. Mm. Rock and Solo. That's what I Yo, want. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what I want. I want a 45 I want a match. Yeah, I want but I want Solo seconds. to be the one that has the Rock's number. So, like, the Rock beats everybody, but yeah. every time he wrestles Solo, Solo just <laughs> demolishes him. Just demolish. Yep. Nothing more than a – like, I'm talking, like, five-minute match. Rock stands out there. Solo, they just do the look, right? And all of a sudden, <laughs> bow, bow, 
bow, thumb. That's it. <laughs> bow, 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 thumb. <laughs> One, two, three. I was such a hater on that move. Like I really was. I'm gonna be honest. I didn't like it when uh I didn't like it when it was called the Nigerian nail, right? I just I, Oh, it was horrible. It was, it was, was horrible. Menor's East. It was nothing against him, right? He no, was, it wasn't. It just yeah. didn't look and good. Umaga, like Umaga doing it. I was like, yo, this is a dumb move. And then like I remember sitting in the car talking about it with uh Andino and the rest of Pure Ignorance. I was like, yo, I hate that move. I just think it's so dumb. And when Damien or when uh when Andino explained it to me, I was like, hey, this move's kind of fire. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I hate it. I hate that it's I hate that you're explaining it to me. I'm kind of I'm agreeing on your side now. So I'm like, all right, yeah. Just start I mean, give, it, like, give it a chance. Yeah, just <laughs> hit people with the pump from now on. Well, opinion. because I mean if you think about it, yeah, it's kind of goofy, but like I don't know, a tape done to your windpipe don't feel good. Right, yeah. like, take that in the street and let me know how you're going to get up after that. Right, <laughs> and the point of the match is, hey, listen, the point of a wrestling match is to win the match, and all it exactly. Takes seconds. So if I thumb you in the throat <laughs> and you fall over and I pin you for three seconds, that's all I need. Exactly. That's what I'm Duh, nail to the throat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start doing it in matches now too. I don't care what people <laughs> say. Like, Why are you doing a Samoan spike? First of all, it's called. Red Dog's canine. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> they just found my new finisher by accident. <laughs> oh shit! Oh, uh, let's see. Jimmy and Jet Mania is gonna rock. Uh, yeah. Oh well, yeah, gonna, yeah, definitely going to. Can't wait. Uh, all the ones that aren't dead. I'll be kind of weird to see. Uh, what was uh, uh Rosie, Rosie in the in the Samoan. Battle Royal. Royal. Yeah, 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 that'd be weird. I wouldn't know. That's uh, the damn Samoans don't pull out. They keep multiplying. <laughs> they can do. we be? Can we? Can we? Can we call it what it is? Like, I hey, mean, man, they they rule. They a hey, they they are amazing at everything except pulling out. Nope, <laughs> their pull out gay sucks. Yeah, <laughs> trash. Garbage. Trash. <laughs> Uh, let's see. <laughs> bow, bow, thumb. Yeah, there you go. I, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to remember this when uh, I'm gonna try to remember doing it. I'm just gonna hit somebody with it. Just hit them. Just stand over the top. Bow, wow. <laughs> like, why did you bark at him? I don't know. It just came to me. You'll never understand. You'll never get it. It's red dogs. <laughs> um, it was the cobra on steroids. You know. I yes, <laughs> yeah. The cobra yeah. was fucking dumb, but it was so great. It the was JPG so... selling the cobra though was amazing. Oh, that was so great! It Dude. was wild to hear him tell that story um, to Chris Van Vliet and say that that was ultimately the reason why he got released because he yeah. sold it too well. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, but it made sense. Like yeah, he no. got bit by a cobra. Like. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Sold it like you're supposed to. You guys can't be mad at him for doing his job. It's crazy. Right. <laughs> oh man, now that movie with that movie is so horrible, but it's so great. I don't it care is. what nobody says. <laughs> it, 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 I bust a stitch every time I see it. Every Bro, when he hit the cobra it. on Alberto Del Rio and went to throw him out of the rumble and got oh, thrown right. out, I was like. I legitimately bit. I was like, there's no way they're going to let Santino win this right now. <laughs> and they hit the cobra. I was like, they're about to pull this trigger. We're about to get Santino over the <laughs> Just imagine that Santino actually won that. Right. So, Santino Morella headlining WrestleMania? Bruh. I was, I oh, know. that would have been great. That would have been great. I would have not been mad about that one. Yo, because who, who ended up main eventing that night? Was it Alberto and who? Uh... I can't Santino remember who he uh, may have been against. But regardless, could you imagine Santino Morella versus Triple H? And then, like, Hunter, like, trying to go for the pedigree, and then Santino just turning it, pow! <laughs> <laughs> Everybody would have gone off. It would have been perfect. They Even if he did it to, Do- to John Cena. <laughs> 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 that would have been the biggest pop ever. Right? <laughs> the crowd would have gone off. It had been like... Yo, Kofi Mania, it would have been Santino Mania, is what we would have called it. <laughs> the the snake movement. <laughs> right. This movement ain't got shit on this. Yeah, right. Not, not a damn thing. 
<laughs> Bruh. Uh, but yeah, that's our show. So we're gonna wrap this up. So if you guys uh stayed around and hung out with us for you know this whole entire oh, who, thing. Who one dumbass of the week. Oh yeah, we gotta look at that. Yeah, I never do that. <laughs> you, Chaz does it too. Don't worry, it's all good. I'm supposed to remind you guys. That's my job. That is, <laughs> that is your uh, job. So oh, at job. this time, right? Uh, you know what's funny is I didn't realize this. I spelled Tony Khan's name wrong. So Tony Com uh, <laughs> and Dave Zero Meltzer. Respect. <laughs> At this current moment, right? Uh, Tony and Dave are split 50-50 at this moment. You know what? I want to give it to them both. <laughs> <laughs> I want to well, give it to them both. They have both done equally dumbass shit this week. Yep. Thanks. So, very there you go. Your dumb asses of the week, which <laughs> they probably go hand in hand. And Uncle Dave has probably been in Tony's stash is the reason why he is the way he is. So that is your dumb asses of the week. Tony yeah. Khan and David Meltzer. So for that, if you guys hung out with us this long, thank you guys for hanging out with us and chilling out with us. Uh, you know, for Xbox, you know, you get your achievements. PlayStation, you get a trophy. Uh, I think you get achievements for Switch. And in PC, you don't get a virus because I'm not Chaz. I, I actually enjoy That's watching. so kind of you. You guys, yeah. you, guys, you guys get an extra graphic card courtesy of your local Walmart if they have them in stock. Just tell them that 3 Count Podcast gave you a coupon. One Walmart purchased <laughs> for one Walmart free. Uh, but not applicable at any other place and not claimed by us. So, you know, in the meantime, between time, guys, you guys go out there. You guys know what to do. Tune in to the next episode and be there or you're legitimately follow us on all of our social media platforms. Just subscribe to our YouTube channels, right? You're following us on Spotify. You're listening to us on Amazon Music or even that dumbass station called iHeartRadio because they don't pay us. You're uh, buying all of our merch on ProWrestlingTees.com or ForYourWear.com. You're even checking us out on whatever other platforms that we're going to be on. On Twitch. Hey, thanks, guys, for, like, hanging out yeah, with us. Yeah, yeah, uh, appreciate it. Last but not least, you're telling your mama about us, you're telling your dad about us, you're telling your uncle, your auntie, your cousins, the one that got removed from the family tree three or four times, you know, you're telling your friends about us, you're telling your enemies about us, because we love haters too. Tell your pets about us too, and don't forget to spade and new your pets, kind of like, you know, that other dude used to say it on The Price is Right, you know, Bob Barker. And do all those great things, or you're really just kind of waiting for this episode to end, you're waiting for the outro, and then you're choosing another episode to listen to. Kawaii. Three Count Podcast listeners, it's your host, the icon Chaz Evans here. Make sure you follow us on all social media platforms. That's uh, the Facebook, that's the Twitter, that's the Instagram, that's the Snapchat. Wait, we don't have Snapchat. The photo, but we don't have photo bucket. But make sure you follow us on all those things at Three Count Podcast or at Three Count underscore pod. That's on the Twitter, by the way, Three Count underscore pod. But yeah, definitely also make sure you check out our YouTube channel and uh, subscribe to our videos. And if you really like us a lot, a lot, definitely go find us on ProWrestlingTees.com slash the number three count pod and get yourself a three count podcast t-shirt and make sure you continue listening to us.